widely recognised we're in a two-speed economy. And if it wasn't for property, you know, you'd be looking at anaemic growth. It's quite telling actually that, you know, for the first time that I can remember, in probably about 12 years, the Reserve Bank had come out and talked about department supply issues. Very reminiscent of what happened sort of 03, 04, 05, when that's all they could do. They couldn't play with interest rates. Glenn Stevens did a speech last week in New York where he said, basically, monetary policy is a spent force. Exactly right. I mean, they've got no choice but to, to proffer some, you know, inflammatory rhetoric to try and call the market because they don't have the lever of rates. You know, I think generally we, we see institutional funding as, as being critical to filling the gaps associated with either retail or, or wholesale uh, lending. I've continued to write that I don't think that there's a property bubble in Australia and I just think that the supply-demand dynamics have been such that it's reasonably well supported. I think clearly there's a perception of oversupply, but there is without any doubt an unprecedented level of supply of apartments. But let's be careful. By definition, that does not of itself mean there is an oversupply. If you're going to talk about oversupply, you have to look at the demand side. So we rank number two for Chinese capital flows into real estate. What that tells me is China's firmly got their view on, on, on Australia. Uh, what's going on with this boom is largely about population. I mean, we've had tremendous population growth over recent years, uh, primarily uh, immigration. I think that the whole urbanisation of our cities, making them bigger cities and the density of living in them, is not just an Australian thing. This is not just happening in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, and Adelaide. This is happening around the world. We're living closer together. We're using technology in different ways. I think there was a general consensus among uh, panel members and clearly from the developers in the room in particular and that is that there isn't an oversupply of apartments in, in the Melbourne market. And it's clear that you know, there's, there's continued demand and we're not seeing um, any great degree of settlement risk at all.